<laughs> Ready? Mm -hmm. June 26, 2002. Uh, we are in the building three, but uh, for the total switch in our strategy now, we are going to begin this with the southwest corner, not northwest corner anymore. So here we are in the southwest corner and on platform 169. Uh, the one floor slip has been removed on this platform, so we are now not on 10 but on 11 here. And that seems to go completely to be the same phase with floor 17 in the central space. Now, uh, in removing floor 10, basically, uh, for on, in this whole area, floor 10 varies. Uh, when it's close to the central space, it is the same as in the, in the central space. It has the same orange clay packing, and it has a very nice relatively thick layer of white plaster on top. And that goes up to almost the, the middle of the platform, somewhere here. And from there, it starts changing. The packing becomes more tan, more beige color, and the plasters on top are um, drier, and they're full of salts. Now, turning towards the west, there is a, an area in this highest point on the platform, right here, that has uh, completely different floors, and it has more than one floor that goes with that floor number 10. It has several slips of floors, and all of them together have some scorching on them, and are uh, completely different. They are much drier. They break into these small uh, pieces, and uh, they're really harder. So they do feel as though uh, they're part of uh, uh, an oven floor, but they're not an oven floor because they don't have enough traces of uh, a firing. They are close to the fire installation to this oven and it's possible that that affected them in the sense that maybe things were taken out or away from on top of the oven and put down here and held here on the floor so the floor got some of that heat and through that heat it dried out. But there is another possibility and that is that under this uh, oven, there is another oven, earlier one, which uh, is associated with this floor, and which would have gone maybe east-west direction, something like that, so in this area. So what we're seeing here is some remains that were not, some sort of almost outside remains of the oven, which affected the floor. And um, another thing about this is that this floor, 11, is uh, still later than the oven, feature 785. So the oven is um, really built on the floor, it seems, on the floor below it, which would be most likely this floor that we see here, this solid, maybe the last solid floor in this area. And in the removal of the floor towards the, along the west uh, wall, the floor 10, uh, what we have, we, we see that the packings are uh, considerably different from the rest of the packings <coughs> in the rest of the house, especially the central floor and the platforms. It consists of different types of clay, such as this very light yellowish clay, and it has uh, patches of very gray-blue clay, and it has a lot of organic material in it, and these are these remains uh, of chaff and, and straw or grasses and um, even pieces of shell and so forth, which all uh, were covered with salts and they are white now. So that area, which also would have been affected to some extent with a, a fire and ashes coming out through this ash collection feature out of the oven. Another thing I need to mention is that we did find rake out traces here in this area where the, the special uh, floors are that I talked about. And uh, there was a, a thin layer of rake out material that was uh, in between this floor, floor 11, and the floor uh, on top of it, floor 10. That could also account for scorching the floor and changing it. Uh, so going, the floor 10 was removed up to these features, which are still our 
basin bin type of feature 780 and 781. Um, and in the rest of the, in the northern part of the floor, this area, the floors are still floors 10. So what we can see now is yet another phase of this feature 780 in which in this phase the feature didn't have very high uh, lip. It had a small short lip. Now this floor and this phase of that feature 780 goes really with a, with a floor below the floor that I'm standing on, which is not uncovered yet. And we know that because this floor goes on top, lips up the feature edge here. 781, on the other hand, is uh, sitting on top of this, 780, and it most likely actually goes with the floor that I'm standing on, and we can see how it was constructed, an earlier floor that was uh, um, damaged most likely when the uh, feature was renovated, they put in a very massive packing uh, made mostly of redeposited oven materials, which then colored the original uh, white floor of this future. On top of that, we had another nice white clay floor, which we have removed, which belongs to the, the phase two of this. This would be phase three. We are uncovering phase three of that feature. And uh, another interesting thing here is this wall. We have a little better understanding of the wall 635 now. And the thing is that the wall is actually sitting on, it seems sitting on this floor, which is floor 11. And the wall is also sitting on top of this feature 780. And it can be seen here in this area how it actually crushed the plaster, the, the short plaster wall that goes with this a feature was crushed by putting on top of it and folded down, putting this wall on top of it. So the sequence of events here was that the, the, this feature existed on the floor that's immediately under this floor. This floor was put on at some point soon after. And on top of that, the, the wall was put on top of that in the next phase. And then there was a, a cut in the wall, and this oven was, was built in that area and cutting into the wall. <coughs> OK, so that's that. Now, going towards platform 162, what, we, what do we see here, Ruth? Do you want to talk about the platform the floors? Platform. Um, 162, yesterday we went down to um, bottom of the floor eight and packing and this is floor nine which goes completely continuously with floor 17 here in the central floor area and um, over on the right side on the north side rather um, it's the floor is really eroded and it's very damp over there and it looks as though it's been cut by a narrow sort of channel. In fact, that's that channel that goes all the way along the northern edge of the, next to the wall, and it's then been filled in. But I think that was perhaps later we can sort of work, work out actually where it was. But anyway, that disturbs that whole northern part of the platform. Um, over here, in 173, we took down the remaining piece of um, floor eight and we can see that the lip now of floor nine the lip between 170 and 173 has moved again a bit southwards oh, northwards i'm sorry northwards so now we are on platform one feature 170 we are taking down floor eight isn't it yes, yes. Floor, eight. floor eight as well going down to floor nine we're just taking off the plaster right now and um, we're also removing this large plaster um, massive build-up that we have all around, especially on this side and that side. We're taking it off here. The plaster comes off with floor eight. So that plaster and the whole plaster build-up was, was a part of uh, the floor eight process um, after 
that was built up on floor, on top of floor 17. So it goes with floor, it's actually just before floor 16 is put down here. Right, and a very nice piece of evidence that we are actually dealing with the same floor uh, level in most of the house, if not all of the house, <coughs> is this orange clay packing right. that uh, appears under the floor right. here as packing and then and over there under over the, there. Under the floor. Right. Yeah. And, floor and we can see it here yeah. as well in yes. places and it definitely is present in the center and it's not present in the west and south part of the building but that's uh, understandable because those floors were different throughout the history of the building. So here we can see a very well preserved uh, part of the floor, still original floor plaster on top of that orange. And here we had a big, that threshold thing that, that went into the kitchen. And on the kitchen side, there was also uh, uh, this thick, like 25 centimeters thick zone of the same uh, packings and plaster, plasters as in the center. So that all was removed yesterday. And now we are going to go down um, in the kitchen to the floors that are most likely on this level of the level of the earliest floor in the area. Okay, so this all is the same as it was yesterday. We have talked about it. And so what we want to do now is to get out somehow. And I can give you a hand if you need. Thank you. And um, going towards our space 89, uh, we haven't done any digging inside 89 yesterday, but we have started cleaning the first row of bricks on top of uh, the space. And uh, so this is the result of it. And we can see the situation has not changed. Our understanding is better because we can see it better, but we still see the same bricks as we saw before, uh, just uh, more clearly. And we began drawing of the sections of the walls and especially the southern wall. I mean, we began with the southern wall. Uh, that's all about it. it. Did anything else happen? Yes, no? No, okay. Uh, in space 88, uh, it, that space is becoming complicated because there is nothing really um, stable about it where one can begin the digging deeper down, except for the last remains of the platform which are in this northeast corner and for the and the basin uh, made of white plaster on the left of it that's coming out of the uh, north wall. So uh, we are going now to start taking the basin out and then removing the, the remains of the platform and then hopefully rapidly going down to follow actually on what's going on in space 89 because 88 and 89 are sharing two walls which are interesting for us and we want to follow what's going on there. And space 87 is um, the burial <coughs> cup is being emptied and what do we have? And we have a skeleton down in here. This is the, the arm bones and the ribs and the vertebrae maybe hands down here and there are the leg bones. I think I just found another cranium here. It looks like we might have two cranium here. Two cranium? Well, we have another one over here, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And it's... I just found that one and another arm bone, so I'm not quite sure what's going on mm -hmm. in terms of it. But I'm just exposing it here and trying to find out where it is and then clean it up nicely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the, here was the barrel cut here. Mm -hmm. This is the barrel cut. Yeah. So the cranium that was sitting uh, in the same burial here in, in our feature 105, 8425, right? right? The one that was sitting right there well, doesn't yeah, seem to go to anything. Seem to go with it's that. an adult and these are juveniles. Oh, I see. So a lot, a lot of different individuals actually in these yeah. three burial Let's we'll see how it works out. Yeah. Okay. So we are here on the second floor in this space, floor number two. And from that floor, the cut that Laurie is emptying now is, that's features uh, 1007, uh, is um, made from that floor. And the, pre, the, the other cuts are made from the upper floor, which is floor number one in this space. 
And the floors are made of very nice white clay, uh, and they have solid packing, and um, a lot of mottled, so to speak, packing that consists of, especially in that northeast corner, that mm -hmm. consists of some uh, bits which are, seem like uh, um, a roof remains. And the continuation of the brick wall. Uh, yeah, and the wall, the painting on the wall, the, the color of the painting on the east wall that we have seen before continues and actually expands. And we'll have to deal with that later on when the burials are emptied. It occurs right down at the um, close to the edge between the floor and wall before. Okay. Thank you, Jason. Bye. Bye. <laughs>